Hello everyone, it's Captain Jonathan Klein, Commanding Officer of Naval Support Activity Hampton Roads, here with a, episode number 16 of Q&A with the Captain, our weekly question and answer series uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. So I want to start this week with a, a big thank you to everybody for their response during Tropical Storm Isaias uh, last weekend and then early this week. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of work that went into um, to getting ready for that, and while you know the installation uh, across the annexes, we, we really dodged a bullet, uh, avoided uh, significant damage from the storm. There was significant damage out in town, and I think it was a good reminder to us to, uh, to how devastating these storms can be and how important it is to be prepared. So, if you're new to the Hampton Roads area, or you just have been dragging your feet getting ready for uh, for a tropical storm or hurricane impacts or destructive weather, uh, really no time like the present to go out and, uh, and put together your emergency preparedness kit. Uh, in particular, a couple shout outs to the folks. Our First Lieutenant Division, as always, continues to impress, uh, doing some great work to get ready, sandbags and clearing uh, debris and, and uh, being prepared to respond and then showing up right after the storm passed to start, uh, start cleaning up the bases. So thanks very much for that. Uh, our Public Works Department, always Johnny on the spot, ready to go, uh, getting generators topped off, dumpsters emptied, uh, having the contracts ready to go. Our Public Works officers were in early, uh, riding out the storm, ready to respond to any incidents. Uh, and really uh, worked hard uh, to get uh, major deficiencies addressed right after the storm. Uh, and finally, a special shout out to our security department. Uh, throughout COVID-19, throughout all of our uh, natural disasters and weather events, uh, security department is just a stalwart. Um, they were out there manning the posts uh, as the winds were blowing, gusts up to 60 knots, and, uh, and really did a great job. So I just want to thank everybody for, uh, for being there through the storm, being ready for it, and responding like the true professionals that you are. Uh, so on to a couple of uh, Q&A kinds of things for you this week. Um, the first question we keep we have gotten a couple times is when someone is a, you know, identified as a COVID positive in the workforce, uh, military or civilian, what is it that we do about that as a command? Uh, if you've been watching videos for a while, uh, back in April we kind of talked about what we were going to do when this happened and I just want to remind everybody, uh, I think we have a pretty aggressive posture. So as soon as someone displays symptoms or um, is diagnosed as a COVID positive, uh, reports that to their supervisor. We do a, a pretty thorough job, I think, of doing the contact tracing and, and asking them where they've been and, and identifying all the locations that they've been to. And then we work with the public health emergency officer or the FIO, uh, our medical professional that's assigned to us to support these efforts. And we identify all those close contacts. That's someone who's within six feet uh, for more than 15 minutes. Um, we work with the FIO, we identify the close contacts, we notify them. And then those people are quarantined uh, until, if it's a person who's just displaying symptoms, until they get tested and get the test result back. And if it's COVID positive, then we follow the return to work guidance for, uh, for those who are in quarantine. Uh, <clears throat> so there's been some, I, th I think, anxiety about um, uh, not being informed when there's a COVID positive and, and not knowing, uh, you know, something has happened in a particular department. Uh, rest assured that, that I take it very seriously that everybody knows if they've had uh, any risk exposure, and, uh, and we are notifying people very aggressively. Uh, to get better at it though, uh, when there is a COVID positive in a department, I've asked all the department heads to, to talk about that. And we're not necessarily gonna identify the person who's COVID positive, but we will identify that someone has, uh, has been exposed or has been tested uh, positive, uh, and let people know that, you know, that's why it's so important to, to implement those protocols of social distancing and, and wearing your mask and washing your hands and limiting those, those large gatherings. So uh, if you have any questions about that, I'm, I'm absolutely willing to answer that. If we're missing the mark on that uh, and, and you feel like we're not doing the right thing, please let me know. And, uh, and we'll, we'll do it a different way. We'll do it a better way. Uh, I'm willing to change in very uncertain times and, and a global pandemic that none of us have ever experienced before. So. I think we're doing the best that we can. I think we're doing it the right way, but that doesn't mean there's not a better way to do it. So uh, please provide me that feedback when you get a chance. Uh, so finally, I want to talk about the other big news. Um, about 10 days ago, we, we got permission from the region uh, to reopen a lot of our, our MWR services and quality of life services. Uh, so uh, as most of you know, uh, that's, it's been pretty limited here. We, we've reopened the gyms and the Liberty Centers. Um, the, uh, the barbershop at the NEX has opened back up. Uh, and, and we did that specifically to try to provide service to, to those, uh, those junior sailors who, uh, you know, they live in the barracks and don't have a place to go home to other than their, you know, their single barracks room here, and there wasn't a whole lot for them to do on the base. So, uh, so we've, we've opened those services back up, but, but there are some limitations, and, and you will see some changes when you get there um, that, uh, that help us to, to control or mitigate 
uh, the potential for spread of the virus. Um, so we've limited the patrons that can go in. It's active duty only at the gym. Uh, it's active duty only at the Liberty Centers. Uh, we are requiring face masks uh, in the gym. You, there's, uh, the, the equipment has been uh, spaced apart further. Uh, you know, when you first walk in, the, you'll notice that there's a plexiglass screens up for uh, folks who are checking, checking you in. Uh, they're going to take your name and uh, the command that you're at and the time that you're there. And that's, once again, that's con for contact tracing, that's so we can notify you if you were in the gym at the same time that somebody else was and they end up being COVID positive, and then we can do the same for, for that other command. Um, <clears throat> face masks are required, except when you're doing cardio, uh, and to accommodate for that, we have spaced the, uh, the equipment apart. Uh, a little bit further than normal. I think the standard was 10 feet, and I think we're probably closer to about 12 feet apart for each of the cardio pieces of gear. And those are on that main gym floor when you walk into the, uh, to the different facilities. Uh, where we couldn't put it on the gym floor, we've, we've taped off or uh, you know, cordoned off certain equipment to provide that, uh, that clearance in that bubble. Um, the, uh, there's been four markers placed throughout the gym, and then there's sanitation stations like you wouldn't believe. There, you know, every every five feet you're going to run into somewhere to, to clean the equipment or clean your hands. And so we're really asking everybody to to use those sanitation stations. Make sure you're wiping down the equipment after you use it. Uh, make sure you're maintaining that physical distance while you're in the facility. At NH30 here at the headquarters, where we've got sort of the the side rooms, there are um, occupancy limits on those, three or four people at most. Uh, and then there's certain equipment in there that uh, has been taped off so that uh, so we don't have people on adjacent pieces of equipment. Um, we've also uh, had to limit the hours. Part of that's a staffing issue. Part of that is just to allow us time to clean, uh, really do a good deep clean in between, um, in between uses. Um, the locker rooms and the showers are still secured. The bathrooms are open. Uh, you can't store it. Don't bring a bag to the gym. You can't store it in the lockers right now. Um, we aren't doing any group sports or you know, uh, group PT uh, or anything like that, no basketball or volleyball and we're not checking out fitness equipment or towels. So we ask everybody to bring their own personal towel to wipe, you know, wipe up their sweat and everything afterwards and then clean the equipment with the sanitation station uh, equipment that's been provided. Uh, and I mentioned that the, the uh, Sailor Center's Northwest is, uh, is open as well as uh, River's Edge at Portsmouth. Uh, unfortunately, we aren't able to provide catering or rentals right now and, and some of that single sailor programming that we'd love to do, but, uh, but we're gonna get back to it eventually. Uh, the important thing, though, is we're giving those sailors a, a place to go and something to do uh, besides just sitting in their barracks room. Um, at the barbershop, uh, both the headquarters and Northwest Annex, um, we've, we've also changed the configuration there. There's only two chairs down here at the, uh, at the uh, headquarters location. Uh, the way the NEX has set up their protocols, you know, the barbers are wearing masks, they're wearing uh, gloves, they've got uh, aprons on. Uh, the customers have to wear their masks while they're getting their hair cut. Uh, and they are also logging the, the customers that are in there, a name, a command, a phone number, uh, to make sure that we're keeping track in case there's a, a COVID exposure in one of the barber shops. Um, so we're doing, a, I think, a lot to, to try to restore some services and, uh, and give people an outlet. I do have to remind you that we are still in HP Con Charlie. Uh, what that means for those of us active duty is that uh, you know, you, you're limited to essential travel, it's to and from work. Um, and uh, essential stops uh, outside of that, grocery stores, pharmacies, gas stations, that sort of thing. Uh, and I, I need you to keep complying with that. We've been doing a, a really great job with that, and I know it's hard. Uh, I know it doesn't make for a very fun uh, summer, but uh, you know, the beach at Dam Neck is open, the beach at um, Fort Story is open, so there are some outlets for, uh, for us on our military installations to get out and, and enjoy a little bit of the summer weather. Uh, I just ask that you do it responsibly and, um, and keep watching out for yourself and your shipmates. Uh, so until next time, uh, that's all I've got for, uh, for today. Uh, so please stay safe, wash your hands, wear your mask. Captain out.